Hello everyone, DM Gashbad here, and today we are going to make a series of terrain pieces to expand our Doctor Who Exterminate game board from a generic quarry to a Scarrow themed board. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make this little lift elevator thing that you may have seen in the previous battle reports. You can see this in Genesis of the Daleks. So what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to take just some regular cereal box cardboard and we are going to take our, our right angle ruler straight edge and we are going to make a rectangle that is two and three quarter inches wide by one and three quarter inches tall. Once we have that we're going to make a series of marks from each corner at two sixteenths of an inch, three sixteenths of an inch, and six sixteenths of an inch. So we'll take this first corner right here That's two, three, and uh, four, five, six. And then the other corner over here, two, three, four, five, six. Turn it around. Next corner. Two, three, four, five, six, two, three, four, five, six. And once we've got those marks in, we are going to connect the opposite marks of three and six inches. So there is, sorry, three and six sixteenths of an inch. So there's three, there's six on that side, there's six. And there's three on that side. Spin it around. Three, six, six. Three. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take an angled line, we're just going to draw it freehand from the corner of where the 3 sixteenths of an inch line meets, and we're going to draw out an angled line to that mark we made at the 2 sixteenths inch point. So like that, like that like that, and so on. Now we're gonna take our Zecto blade and our metal straight edge. We are going to cut out the whole rectangle and we are going to cut out the innermost rectangle. As we're cutting out this central rectangle, I may as well point out, this cardboard has two sides, a smooth printed side and a coarser side. Do your lines on the coarser side. First off, it's easier. Second off, we're not gonna see it. So if you push too hard, these indentations are not gonna show up on the final paint job. And for the central one, obviously we're going to be careful and we're not gonna go over the lines. We are just going to cut out that central area. So, we're gonna keep both these pieces. First off, this central one that you just cut out, we're just gonna shave off a tiny amount from two edges, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. We're just gonna cut off just a little sliver of that from one side, and then again, from the other. Put that somewhere you're not going to lose it. This piece here, now we're going to cut out along these di diagonal lines that we drew. So, so 
that. Now what we're going to do is lightly score along the 3 16 inch lines in the center. We're not gonna cut all the way through. We're gonna be careful about this. We're just gonna make a bit of a cut so that it gets easier to fold. So there's a light score. I'm gonna bend it backwards just a bit so I get a sharp edge on the other side. And then I'm gonna bend it the other way. And let's use the straight edge because sometimes that makes it a little better. There we go. Something like that. And I'm gonna do that to the other three sides. So then we're gonna fold something like that. What I'm doing now is I'm just cutting out a small rectangle from a chunk of scrap regular foam board. I'm making it about one and one eighth inch by two and three sixteenth inch. It doesn't have to be exact, it just has to be a little bit larger than that central rectangle that we cut out of the cardboard. Okay, so after you have that, what you're going to do is you're going to take some regular white glue and you're just going to attach that inside your folded cardboard like that. And again, doesn't have to line up perfectly, just has to not overlap the folded edges. And then you have that, and you can put a little extra on the top. Spread it around a bit. And if you go and attach that one scrap that we did not lose, and stick that right in there. And the platform that rises and lowers. It won't, but it's supposed to look like it can. Once that insert is nicely glued in there, the next thing we're going to do is take out our hot glue gun and we're going to glue these corners. So we're just going to drop a little bit of hot glue into the corners and we're going to fold the edges together and hold them there until that sets. So now that, that is nicely glued, I'm actually going to peel off a little bit of the paper on the other side of this foam board just because it's a little bit thicker than the rest of the base. So I'm just gonna peel that off and that'll help it sit a little bit flatter. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this square dowel. I bought a pack of these balsa wood dowels at a craft store, Michael's I think. Just they come in different sizes like that. I'm going to take the one that is, how thick is this one? This is a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to cut it to seven eighths. So let's find a nice flat edge. There's that one there. And there's seven eighths. I'm just gonna make as nice of a cut as I possibly can all the way around this. Because of course this isn't supposed to look like wood, so I want this to look as even and neat as I can. So I'm going to take my time and really try and make a smooth cut. Now that we have our little square dowel cut out, we are going to cut out a notch on this base for it to go in. So I'm just going to set it in just a touch, maybe one eighth of an inch, 
from one of these lines in the center on one of the sides. So what do we got here? Just on the right hand side of one of these edges. And so I'm going to mark off a spot where it's going to go. And then as neatly and as carefully as I can, I'm going to cut out that place. And I gotta cut through this diagonal section here. And I gotta cut through the foam. And the less I tear and scratch and bend, the better. like that. So I'm going to wipe off the excess, let that dry, and it's complete. It'll be ready for painting. We're going to start off with a black undercoat with your spray paint of choice. So here we have our completed lift undercoated. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a little black paint and I'm going to run a line of that in the gap on the top. Just make sure I get all the little spots that the spray can missed. Next, I have gone and mixed up a real dark silver for the base coat using black and silver. And it's right there. And so I'm just going to spread that all around here. So once all that is dry, I've gone and added more silver to the mix here. And just on the sides, not on the top, I'm going to paint on a long arc, kind of like a rainbow, along the sides of both the edge of the lift platform and a sharper arc on the edge of the control panel. So I'll just a loop a bit like that. I'm going to do it on all four sides, so I'm doing that like that, so I'm just going to do a line and like that, and a line like that. And once I've gotten all the sides, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to mix up a lighter shade of silver, and I'm going to go above that line that we've done and make a higher arc on the sides as well. So here we have the lighter mix going in for the second highlight, just arcing it a little bit above that last line that we made. Finally, I made a final mix. This is almost pure silver. It's just got a little bit of black in it. So I'm going to do one more arc along each of those edges like before. But I'm also going to take this and I'm going to paint the entire top area, except of course for this little recessed uh, rectangle right here. So all this is going to be this very light mix of silver and black, plus of course a final arc along the sides. Then to finish the silver part of this, we're going to take some pure silver, so no black, and we're just gonna run that color along the edges and corners. So just along places like this, and in the inner rectangle like that, and along the edges of the control panel like that. Yep, 
So next, we're going to make a little control panel on top here. You can't actually see this in the episode. I just assume there is one. So you have a pretty good range of how you want to do this. In my case, I'm going to take a medium gray, like this rain gray, and I'm going to just draw a little square uh, set into the square on top. Something like that. Next, we're going to take a lighter gray, like this drizzle gray, and we are going to paint a smaller square inside of that. So it'll leave a darker gray outline around the panel. Then finally, just to really thoroughly put us in the obsessive compulsive range, we're gonna do it one more time, this time with pure white. Next, we should probably add some buttons. I'm going to make a red one and a blue one, one for going up, one for going down. The nice thing about using these cheap craft paints is that they're really thick, so they'll actually be raised a little bit from the surface, so it works for these panels and these buttons. We don't have to add anything to them. So for the red, I'm gonna start with a maroon mixed with a little black, and for the blue, a little copan blue mixed with a little midnight. And so we'll just make a little dot right there. right like there and because these spots are so small we don't actually have to highlight them nope I'm lying I'm kidding we're of course going to highlight everything that's just what we do so for the red dot I am going to add just a little bit of maroon to the top make that stick out a little bit there then we'll go to a little tombe red and the final highlight Normally I'll let this dry a little bit before adding these highlights, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And then finally, a little uh, Tompe Red mixed with uh, pumpkin. And then for the blue, we can do just a straight Copen Blue. And then Copen Blue mixed with a lighter blue, in this case, Mermaid Blue. And then finally, just a little pure mermaid blue. And there we have it, our completed lift from Scaro. You can hit it with the spray varnish of your choice, and that's it.